Hey guys, so today I'm going to go over the strategic form representation of a very basic game in game theory. So before we kind of get into it, you're going to want to know what I mean by a basic game. So we're just going to use these kind of these two kind of bullet points to describe what we mean by a basic game. The first thing that we want to know is that it's going to be static. So it's not going to be a multi-stage game. It's not going to be, you know, multi-stage. So it's not going to be in one, it's not going to be, you know, one player moves, then the second player moves. It's static. So there is only one time frame, you could say, because there's, there's not going to be different stages. Both players are going to move at the exact same time. And that's it. That's kind of what we mean by static. The second point that's important to note is that there's going to be complete information between the two players. That is that they both are fully informed and they both are aware of the action that the other player could take. It's also probably important to note that there's going to be two players in this game. So two, two kind of agents interacting with each other. So just to kind of reiterate a bit further on what I just said kind of more specifically because I was quite vague um, what we mean by static is that both players will act simultaneously there's no sequential actions they were both gonna move at the they're both gonna choose their action at the exact same time and that's it the game is over after that when it comes to complete information what we mean by that is that the players are gonna have full knowledge, they're going to be fully aware of the other player's actions and the other player's payoffs associated with those actions. So now we're kind of clear on what we mean by these. Now let's kind of look into what we mean by strategic form representation and what this is going, going to entail. So what do we mean by the strategic form representation? So what the strategic form representation is going to do is that what it's going to tell us is for each player within the game, so for each I player, I just being an arbitrary player within our set of players, so for each I player, the first thing it's going to do is denote the set of possible actions that this player can take within our game. So it's going to denote set of actions or strategies, whatever you want to call it. And the way we denote the set of possible actions in the game is with the capital A subscript I, which means this is the set of possible actions for player I. That's where the I comes from. So let's say that our player could do X or Y. It could only do those two things. Then the set of possible actions would be this here contain these two elements with a single element within the set denoted like this. So, you know, small a is contained within the set of, you know, capital A, which is the set of all actions, and this is just denoting one action, one element within our set of all possible actions, x and y. So that's the first thing the strategic form representation is going to do, is denote all the set of possible actions that our player can take along with each element within that set of possible actions. So the second thing that the strategic form representation is going to specify for us is the payoff functions associated with the actions that we just described. So more specifically, we're going to define the payoff function in the following way. So the utility, we're going to use utility functions, utility just being the payoff, the benefit that you get from any given action. So the utility for player i within our game is going to be the following function. So it's going to be the Cartesian product of all the set 
of the set of all possible actions will be the Cartesian product of these. So what this means is just all the different combinations of all the different action sets. Because remember, the payoff that a player is going to receive doesn't just depend on the actions that that player can take, but also the actions of the other player. So the utility function is going to have a domain, which is the set of all possible actions and all the different combinations of all the different possible action sets. And it's going to map that into the set of real numbers. And this here will just be our, you know, any value that is going to specify the payoff. So it's going to take all the different combinations of all the different actions, and it's going to map that to the set of real numbers, which will be any value, any number, which will represent the payoff associated with this combination of action sets. So that's what this function is going to do. Just want to take a, a step back here and just look at this function in quite a general context. It's not being it's not being very specific. It's just telling us kind of in a general sense what a payoff function is going to do, which is going to take all the actions that people take in the game and it's going to take those actions and put them into a payoff, which will be a value represented by a real number. That's all that this payoff function is going to do. It's basically just telling us the payoff associated with all these actions that the people are going to take. And the payoff, as I just said, will be a real number, which was this is going to denote our payoff. So to be a little more specific, being that we know that this is the set of actions, so the action set for player I is capital A, and that a single action within that action set, so an element of this is going to be small a, which will be contained within that larger set, the utility or the payoff for each player, i, we're going to denote like this, because that would be n, all the way up to n actions. This is going to describe the payoff or the utility from the outcome that arises from this stream of actions that are taken within the game. So this stream of actions right here. The outcome arising from these actions, the payoff associated with that outcome we describe here with this kind of utility function. So UI of all these actions is going to be our payoff function or utility function. We're going to be the same thing. Those words are going to be used interchangeably. So the utility function associated with this is basically saying Whatever stream of actions this leads to, this is going to be the utility of that, of that outcome. So now I'm just going to kind of formally conclude everything that we've done so far and write our strategic form representation in the formal way that you would usually write it in an exam or how you kind of, in the, the various books that you'll read, how they formally define it usually. And then I'm going to quickly go over an example. So formally, the way that we define the strategic form representation or everything that we've just described is with this symbol here. This is just going to describe our game. This symbol, I don't know the kind of what it's called exactly, but that's going to describe our game. And we're going to write it like this. So you should now be roughly aware of what all these elements are going to be. So as we can see, this is just, all this is doing is just describing the game that we previously just described in a more kind of specific way. N is just going to be the number of players, which in a simple two-player game, N is just going to equal two. Capital A, subscript I, is just the action set, or the set of all possible actions that player I can take. So one of these two players, or any of these two players, this is the set of possible actions they can take. And U, I, 
this is just going to be the payoff function, which, as we just described, is associated with all these actions. So that's all this is. This is just the number of players, the actions they can take, and the payoff associated for player i. That's what our strategic form representation is, and this is the formal way to kind of describe it and the notation that we would use. So now let's look at an example. Um, as you should recall now, this is how we're going to define our game. This little kind of equation here. This is our game. This is the number of players, these are the actions they're going to take, and this is their payoff. And we can apply this framework to any game that, that we could possibly think of. So in this case, we're going to apply it to this quite simple game here. It's a two-player game, as you can see. So we already know immediately n is going to equal 2. Now, each of these two players can do two possible actions I've set out. They can either do heads or tails. Player 2 can also do heads or tails. If they both do heads, they both get a payoff of 100. If they both do tails, they get a payoff of 100. Otherwise, if any of them do the opposite of what the other person has done, they both get a payoff of 0 in either case. So our action set for both player 1 and player 2 is identical. So we can say action player 1 is going to equal that of player 2. And that is just going to equal the two possible actions they can take, which is heads or tails. And each of these will have element H or T. Now, in terms of the payoff, we can quite easily derive a function for this because I have given quite a basic example. In most cases, the payoff function might be a little more complicated. It can get quite tricky, but for this case, we know that the payoff associated with any kind of action, so any combination of actions of player one and player two, the payoff for each player i associated with those the, that combination of actions here. So the utility for player i that makes action one given the action of the other player is going to equal this. It's going to be 100 if they both make the same action, so if a1 equals a2, and it's going to be 0 if they make different actions, so if a1 is not equal to a2. So that's going to be the payoff for each player i within the set n of all players, which is just 2. So just like that, we've derived the number of players, because that was quite simple, it was 2, the action set which again was quite simple because there was two possible actions, heads or tails. For both players, the action set is identical, and the payoff function, which is just going to be this. So we've de derived all elements of our strategic form representation, utility function or payoff function, the actions and the number of players, because this is obviously quite a simple game. But hopefully with that example, each of these kind of components of the game now are quite easy to understand and you're quite now comfortable in understanding by what we mean by the strategic form representation of a game. That's just taking this game right here that we see in all the different colors. It's taking this game and it's putting it into this formal notation here. That's all we're doing, just transferring this into this. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching.